this video demonstration is a continuation of the last video demonstration which was an overview of nonlinear programming. In that example I demonstrated several example problems and the one we're going to focus on is shown here. So if we have this nonlinear objective function that we want to minimize, um, we'll go through how you can code that in MATLAB and how you can solve this problem. So this is our objective function. It is nonlinear. The sine of x1 plus 0 0.1 times x2 squared plus 0 0.05 times x1 squared. We're going to be changing. We want to minimize that function, and we're going to be changing x1 and x2 so that we find the optimal points. We have x1 and x2 bounded, as you can see here. So x1's got to be between minus 5 and positive 1. x2's got to be between negative 3 and positive 3. And we have this equality constraint where we need x1 plus 3, that quantity cubed, minus 2, minus x2 is equal to 0. So in the previous lecture I showed you what that looked like. So this is a map of our objective function shown by these contour lines. And then that constraint is shown here. And we demonstrated graphically that that optimum is right about here. And here's the optimal solution. But now I want to walk you through the coding that you could do this in an automated way. If your problem is more complex than this, if it has more variables so that it can't be graphed, and if things are changing and you need a very quick solution, um, there are a lot of reasons to need to solve this problem fast using computation. So I'll show you how to do that. So in the last lecture, I mentioned that for using the solver, you have to you have to code your objective function and your nonlinear constraints as separate functions. So I've got three files that I'm working with, and they're all in the same folder. That's important. The first of these is the objective function. So I'm, I've created a function called obj underscore function, and that function has cost as its output is equal to the name of the function and the input. So the inputs are is this vector which contains it's a two by one vector the first element represents x1 and the second element represents x2 and then I just write out my objective function so this cost is equal to the sine of x1 plus 0 0.1 times x2 squared plus 0 0.05 times x1 squared so identical to the objective function that I've shown here so it's as simple as that this function's job is to take a particular value of x1 and x2 and tell me what the cost is at that value. Similarly, I've coded the nonlinear constraint. So MATLAB requires me to have a separate function that gives an output showing C, which represents the nonlinear inequality constraints, and CEQ, which represents the nonlinear equality constraints. So this is a function that has these two different outputs. And in this case, they're both a function of just x. So I define CEQ is equal to x1 plus 3, that quantity cubed, minus x2. And you can see that corresponds to this equation exactly. But I've moved everything over to the right-hand side. So this, um, this function's job is to take in a particular value of x1 and x2 and compute this left hand side it may not be zero if this CEQ is not zero that means that this constraint is not satisfied and the solution I have at that point is infeasible or it's not a valid solution so the solver is going to work to find the right values of x1 and x2 so that the residuals go away and that this value eventually becomes zero this particular problem does not have a nonlinear inequality constraint, so I can just set C being equal to nothing. But you could easily convert this equality constraint to an inequality constraint by just changing um, the variables here. So I've set up the third file I have is called nlp underscore example dot m, and it's just a script file that calls those other functions and solves this optimization problem. So I'm walking through the the formulation of this optimization problem. I have my lower bound vector is equal to minus 5 and minus 3, and my upper bound vector is equal to 1 and 3. 
And as you can see, that corresponds to the values on this side. Minus 5 and minus 3 is the, my lower bounds. And 1 and 3 are my upper bounds. Here I'm setting x0. So this is my initial guess, or the starting point for my solver. So I'm saying that it is minus 3 and minus 3. When I go back to look at this graphically, it, that point is right about here. And that's not a feasible point, so it's it's not a good solution. It doesn't it doesn't satisfy the constraint. So my solver is going to have to migrate to here to the point where it both satisfies the constraint and finds the minimum possible value of the objective function that um, that results in minimal cost. So here I'm defining my linear inequality constraints. I don't have any, so I just set a and b equal to empty matrices. Similarly for linear equality constraints, I don't have any, so they're just empty matrices. But MATLAB requires me to tell it that I don't have those constraints. This next line, you can enter in different options for the solver. Um, I've probably gone a little bit overboard on some of these. This line is not necessary. You don't have to include options. But if you want to get into the nitty-gritty of finding the best solver and the best settings that give you the best solution, you might find yourself playing around with the options. So I'm using this function called optim options, and I'm just saying I want to use fmincon as my function, the algorithm that I want it to use. So now I'm specifying the property here and my selection for that property here. So the algorithm that I want is an algorithm called SQP, which stands for Sequential Quadratic Programming. Essentially what it does, it's an iterative solver used for nonlinear programming problems. And what it does is it takes your initial point and it approximates your objective function and constraint space around that initial point as a quadratic programming problem, which it can solve very quickly. And then it finds, finds a new point, it finds a search direction and a new point, and it, then it approximates around that point using like a Taylor series approximation. It approximates the space as another quadratic programming problem and takes another step and it keeps doing this in an iterative fashion. Another option I've selected is what I want it to display. So I'm saying display my detailed iterations as it goes along so that I can check and make sure that it's marching along efficiently toward a solution. And then I'm saying ultimately the solver might give up if it goes too many iterations without finding a solution that satisfies the constraints. It might give up and say this is the best I can do. So you can you can fix how long MATLAB keeps trying to find that solution. So I'm saying it can evaluate my objective function up to 100,000 times, and it can take up to 2,000 iterations overall. And I'm specifying the function tolerance. So this is a, once MATLAB sees that my objective function no longer changes by more than 1 e to the minus 10 on each iteration, it'll, it'll stop and say that's that's close enough. So this is a pretty tight tolerance actually. So, so if I get a solution, I'm going to be pretty confident that I'm just about as close as I can possibly get to the actual solution within a margin of error of 1 e to the minus 10. So don't worry too much about these options. Just know that you have this at your disposal. If, you need to, if you're not getting solutions and you think maybe your solver is the problem, you can get into your solver and start to play around with different properties there. So I'm just going to run my code up to this point and show you what some of those different options look like. So my algorithm is SQP. I'm displaying this. This is my maximum function evaluations, my maximum iterations. Those are the ones that I'm setting. And then these are the ones that are just there by default. So you have ability to change a lot of things. You could use parallel computing if you're set up for that um, to make things solve a little bit faster. This is a pretty simple problem, so we don't we don't really need to specify much more than we've already specified. And actually, we've probably already done more than we need. So I've run my code down to here. I haven't executed this line yet because I wanted to walk you through what exactly this line is doing. So I, I'm using this function, fmincon. It's going to output x, which is going to be my optimal solution. So it's going to be a 2 by 1 column vector with x1 and x2 stacked on top of each other. So what my function spits out should be the best combination of x1 and x2 that result in minimizing my objective function. 
I can also output the value of that objective function if I if I need to for whatever reason. So I'm just defining that as a variable called cost, just mainly for my own curiosity, but you might find that you need that um, somewhere else. So now let's get to the inputs of this function. So the first input is your objective function, and I've done a little trick here that might help later, but I'm here I'm specifying this m file, this function that I showed you before. So I showed you that function that is my objective function. Well this needs to have the same name and you need to define what inputs are going into it. And here I've done something where I'm um, specifying that x contains the variables that I want MATLAB to change to find my optimum. And the reason, and you can see I've only set this up for one input, which is that vector x, but you can do things like if you need to pass through parameters or extra information that your objective function needs, you can pass those through here. So I can make this x and u, and I can define a u here, and now um, MATLAB would know what this extra information is, but it also knows don't change those inputs, only change x to find the optimal solution. So I don't need that in this problem, so I'm going to take these away but I want to leave you with this format because you might need it. This, this is an important in real-time optimization applications because you're looking at how the external variables are changing and then you're solving the problem based on what those external variables are. So those external variables can have a significant impact on the shape of your objective function and the optimal solution itself. So if you're doing real-time optimization and those parameters keep changing, you want to give MATLAB a way to feed in those extra parameters. The next input is x0 or x0, so I'm, that's just my starting point, that's my initial guess. MATLAB then requires my linear inequality constraints and then my linear equality constraints, so those are just empty matrices. It then needs my lower bound and my upper bound. Then the next input is similar to the objective function. Here I've typed in the name of the function that contains my nonlinear constraints and I'm saying x is going to be the variable that changes and I, I could have room to put in other external variables that MATLAB is not allowed to change but that could significantly impact the solution to my optimization problem. And then finally I put in my options and I tell MATLAB, MATLAB solver fmin con to use these different options as it tries to find a solution. So now I'm going to go through and run my code and get that optimal solution and I'm going to show you what it's outputting. So remember we're trying to solve this problem. We want to minimize this function but we want to stay within these constraints. And remember, my nonlinear constraint is an equality constraint. So I go here and I run this script. Okay, so that happened pretty fast. So because I told it to display all my iterations, you can see um, that it's doing that. So it takes seven iterations. This fval is the value of my objective function. So it's 1.21 when I start but MATLAB keeps marching forward to the solution where it gets minus 6.1, so a pretty good improvement there. So I'm minimizing my, my cost or whatever it is um, to get here. This feasibility says how, how closely am I satisfying that constraint. So I'm getting down on the order of e to the minus 10, um, so it's, I know this solution is, is feasible because it's very, very close to within this very tight tolerance of the constraint that I defined. So these are just some of the examples. You, you might have problems that are much more complicated and you and it might take minutes or hours or even days to solve and then it's really useful to see these different iterations and try to do some diagnosis on what's happening so that you can better solve the problem. So it tells me that I um, I did get a solution because my objective function stopped changing it reached a point where its gradient was zero, so moving in any direction doesn't improve things. You're at a, a fixed point um, if you're 
So then my optimal solution is minus 2. So x1 is equal to minus 1.996, and x2 is equal to 1.01. .01. And then my cost, or the value of my objective function at the optimal solution is minus 0 0.61. And if we go back to the previous presentation, you can see that that lines up exactly with what we found here. Then the rest of this code, which I will post on the course website, just doesn't really do much, it just walks through the plotting. You don't, you don't necessarily need this. But I'm just defining x1 and x2 on a grid, calculating my cost over that whole grid, um, telling it I want a contour plot with labels, and then I'm defining my constraint and plotting my constraint. And then finally, this last line, I'm actually plotting the optimal solution that I found with that big red dot. So that is how you solve an equality-constrained nonlinear programming problem. If we wanted to solve an inequality-constrained nonlinear programming problem, it's actually quite easy. And I'm going to go back and solve one of these other ones that we had defined previously. So let's do this one, um, where x2 has to be greater than or equal to um, this other quantity. So we're looking for solutions only up in this region, and we know that it's going to be the same solution, but I'll walk through the process of converting that equality constraint into an inequality constraint. So the math here is the same. All I really need to do is change the sign, so this is no longer going to be an equal sign, it's going to be less than or equal to. But syntax-wise, I just go into MATLAB, and I say, well, this is an equality constraint. I actually want this to be now my inequality constraint, and I want to make this one my equality constraint. It's as simple as that. So now I've defined my inequality constraint. So now I'm saying this whole value has to be less than or equal to 0. And if you wanted to do greater than or equal to 0, then you just negate this whole thing. So let's go back and solve this now um, inequality constrained problem. And you can see we're getting the same solution as we expected. So finally, let's switch it to this one. We're, we're actually going to get a different solution. So I just need to go negate the right-hand side of that um, C equation. So I go back in here, go back to my nonlinear constraint. I still want this to be an inequality constraint, but I want it to be now the reverse. So I just put parentheses there, put a minus sign. Now we should, it should find this solution rather than this solution. So let's just verify that it does. Go back to my script and hit run. Okay, so now it found this new solution. So we've actually walked through all three of those problems. The equality constrained one, the less than or equal to, equal to problem, and the greater than or equal to problem. And it really took very minor variations in the code to do that. Thank you.